Carlos and Life Path. Hi, Faye. How are you today? I'm good. I'm happy every time I look forward to when I'm Zooming getting together with you. It's like one of the highlights of my day. So I'm super excited. <laughs> Well, that's good. Or you don't have a very exciting day, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Are you kidding? This is, it's like my own, it's like my own, this is like my time when I meet with you. It's like my own check-in to health, wellness, and lifestyle for myself. So everything we always discuss, it's things that I personally can relate to. So are you kidding me? I just no other place I'd rather be right now. <laughs> well, you know, and the thing is, if you're, if you're feeling it, chances are if you're feeling it or i'm feeling it chances are other people are too right i mean we're all in this this big cauldron of not knowing what to do not knowing what when we're ever going to be released from prison um do we want to even be released from prison you know it's sort of like what are we what what are we doing and um and i think get released from prison sorry to interrupt you but you know it's like okay when we finally can get out we don't know how like what are you going to do how do you get out how do you readjust it's 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 seemingly impossible. I mean, we, we will get through it, but um, it's seemingly impossible. I just wish I just wish there were more people giving positive messages, and I think that's why I like doing this with you, is because we're always we're always focusing on something positive that you can be doing. So, what has really come up for me this week um, is how many people are not really um, they're still struggling with food. Huge, huge stress. Um, they're still struggling with their food issues. They're still struggling with their weight. Um, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with, and I, I don't want to take the, the burden off of people because I think people have to own up to what they're doing. Um, but I do want to talk about a little bit about the role cortisol plays in all of this, right? So all of our adrenal glands are completely stressed to the max from, from what's going on with all the stress. You know, not knowing what's happening, not knowing if we're, ever, if we're gonna have money again, if life's ever gonna come back to norm, any sort of norm, normalcy again. Um, every five minutes you get a, you're hearing something different, you know. Um, that's very uh, uh, frightening for a lot of people, very, very frightening, and especially for lay people. You know, a lot of doctors can filter this stuff because we're used to filtering a lot of the medical information. Um, but it's, I think it's really hard for other people. So what they do is they either switch to comfort foods, which are generally sugar, breads, you know, pastas, all of that stuff um, that we all love so much. Um, and, and, and even people, what I've found is even people who are dieting uh, are not losing weight. And I think that's the cortisol part of it, because when our body's constantly stressed, we're putting out a lot of cortisol. And when we put out a lot of cortisol, our body um, stores fat and sugar and all of that stuff, because it's storing it for, you know, it's storing it so that we can react, so that we have the, the nutrition, nutrient we need to react. Um, and uh, we don't really need to do that um but that's you know I, I mean i can't sit here and tell people how to experience that this but, but what can we do to help balance sort of interrupt that cortisol like the, what can we do to actually help like to to do something to assist ourselves or or something to avoid maybe this like if someone says okay you're 100 you hit it right on the nose doc what do i do where do i start okay where you start, if you've got your eating under control, which means you're not eating sugar, you're not eating simple carbohydrates, you know, you, and so the next place to look is how is your sleep doing? Because sleep will affect cortisol levels. Um, exercise affects cortisol levels. Uh, so you have to really look at all the pillars of what can possibly be affecting your adrenal glands, right? So what do you do first? You sit back and say, am I eating enough? Or am I eating the right foods? Am I drinking enough water? and or non-caffeinated beverages, so herbal teas, all of that. So am I doing that right? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting enough exercise? Am I pooping okay? Like if those five things, if you've answered yes to those, and I bet you not very many people who are gonna listen to this can answer yes to all of that, then you'd have to look deeper. But really those are the five main things. And, and you know, it's interesting because I, I, you know, I don't often talk about, um, well, 
let me take that back. I talk a lot about the GI tract, um, quite a lot. But I think a lot of people don't realize that it's so important for your immune system as well. And if your immune system, if your gut isn't healthy, your immune system isn't going to be healthy, right? So, so, so this all really does play off each other. Right, so if you're eating too much sugar and simple carbohydrates, it's gonna it's gonna mess up with your with the with your bacteria in your gut. Then you're not gonna produce enough immune system cells. Then you're gonna leave yourself open to more vi you know to viruses and colds and what have you, whatever's going around. So so what I've been having people do really is, if if they can get all of those things right, I think there are a couple of supplements that are really important, like Sammy, I think is really super important for helping to balance our emotions. 5-HTP, really important to help balance our emotions. Now, if you're on an antidepressant or something like that, then you can't take those supplements. But, um, but there are, I think, I think and I, I think a good probiotic. You know, we've not talked really about probiotics in this whole, um, ever since you and I have been having these conversations. And I think probiotics are so important uh, because that's what's really going to help balance. A, it's what helps balance our, you know, bacteria in the gut. So you're not, so you you'll be able to absorb your food better. Um, and 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 the other thing I sometimes forget to tell people is that sugar is actually an anti nutrient. Oh so <laughs> not only does it not give you any nutrition, it takes B vitamins out of you as the body is metabolizing. So so. Yes, and I know I spent a lot of time harping on the dangers of sugar, but when we're now up to 13 cancers that are directly contributable to sugar. Wow. Um, I read a study, and I'm writing about this for my newsletter um, yesterday, that um, it's estimated that we'll probably miss 80,000 cases of cancer in the, and just in these three months alone. Um, because nobody's... I'm sorry? That's crazy. That's mind boggling. Well, because nobody can go for mammograms. Nobody can go for health screenings. Nobody or nobody or they're not doing it. I mean, I'm open in doing all of my health screenings and patients are coming in for it. Not as many patients as there were before all of this. But people are coming in for their, you know, for their uh, routine stuff just as well. Now, it's fortunate that you're doing that. So it, it, I'm, I just interrupt one more time because I'll give you an example. My daughter, who's prone to a lot of inflammation, is eating things that she shouldn't be normally eating. It's comfort eating, not even stress eating. She's a teenager, but she's prone to inflammation. Her knees are flaring up. I can't even take her to an orthopedist or or to get an MRI, you know, just to make sure she didn't if she was running or did something. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm I'm grateful that you're available because it's a lot of doctors aren't. No, and I, and, I, and I didn't realize that. I was speaking to someone else earlier, and I didn't realize quite how many physicians have really stopped working yeah. and have stopped seeing patients. And, um, and I think that is such a drastic overkill, and I think it's going to be really, really harmful in the long run if people don't take, you know, don't do their regular uh, checkups, their regular care. Um, and so on my website, and this is certainly not to push my website, but I'm just saying what I've done is like create these protocols, you know, like one for heart, one for the brain, one for this, one for that, one for weight loss, one for sleep, because people are turning more to those than they are actually seeing their physicians. And I really want, you know, and I really want to encourage people that their, you know, their life will exist after this virus. We don't know what it's going to look like, but it will exist. I mean, that's for sure. So why not take care of yourself um, in the meantime and be prepared uh, for the next time something like this should come around? Um, because if you're healthy, chances are you're not going to get sick um, pretty much. I mean, that's not to say every there's never there's not been healthy people that get sick from this. I mean, don't get me wrong. But you increase your likelihood so much when you're sick. Like you double and triple and quadruple your risk of getting this when, when you have illnesses. You, I mean, every time, I mean, there's, I, I could talk to you for hours. It's like, a, it's like this, this book of knowledge, but the biggest thing that you said to me, and I've been having this conversation a lot. I even have it with my own children, my own family is immune system, immune support. That is the first line of defense against viruses like this. Right. So we have to Absolutely. from supplementation, right. I'm, 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 I'm I want to, I'm, absorbing as much as I can from the knowledge that you're giving me, you know, supplementation, sleeping, eating, right? Exercise, 
all that stuff affects our immunity, correct? And, and making sure you're moving your bowels correctly. Yeah. It, I mean, that's, that's the big thing for your immune system. And, and, system. and I think, I'm sorry? It's the system. We have to function as, as a balanced system. Absolutely. And when all of those things are working in coordination, then you're going to feel better. And A, you're going to feel better. You're not going to be worried about having to get sick because you're in the best shape of your life. And I sort of look at this like, why don't more people look at this as, an, as, as a way of getting in the best shape of their lives, right? Um, you know, a lot of people are home, working from home. So that's two hours of your day you're not commuting. So where are those two hours going? Are you sleeping too much? <laughs> are you sleeping in? Are you taking naps? Are you talking to your friends too much? Um, you know, I mean, I think, I think, you know, it's all not, and I think all those things are important. I think talking to your friends is important during this time and going outside for walks. All of those things are important, but it's also important to take good care of yourself. And that involves eating correctly, drinking enough water, making sure you're well hydrated. Um, and a lot of people don't like water. So throw in some seltzer water, throw in some flavored seltzer, herbal teas, cook up some herbal teas, throw them in the refrigerator. They're delicious, you know, so it just gives your body a little bit of a different change. Mineral uh, water, or is, that, is that acceptable? There's a lot of variations of mineral water out there. Absolutely. You know, I have I, like every variation, I think, in my garage from my own, from myself, my children, we all like kind of different. So I've really tried to incorporate mineral water as much as possible. But I think, you know, when you look at what are some good immune system foods to eat, right? right. So we've got things like, we've got um, uh, mushrooms. Mushrooms are an excellent source. They're one of the only sources of vitamin D that we get naturally, that we can eat. Wow. Um, so, and mushrooms, and mushrooms have been known to, for immune, enhance immune health for thousands of years. I mean, the Japanese with shiitake and reishi and maitake and all of those mushrooms that we know help support our immune system. So eat more mushrooms, make some mushroom recipes, make a nice mushroom soup, like do something. Um, then there's eggs. Eggs are a great source of, of, um, of healthy fat. And we need healthy fats in our diet. And it's also a good source of vitamin D. So those are the, really the only two places we can get vitamin D from and the sun, and the sun of course, or from a pill bottle. Yeah. So those are, the, those are the places we get vitamin D from. And uh, it hasn't been particularly sunny nor warm where we live. So it can't get vitamin D. A whole other question in itself. <laughs> um, which is actually probably a good thing. It keeps us inside a little bit more. Um, so it's probably not a bad thing for now. But... Um, you know, so, so, uh, eggs, uh, people are so afraid of fats. So you have to get healthy fats in your diet. Um, so you want to stay away from, you know, like if you're, if you're looking at, you know, everybody's worried that there's a beef shortage and there's, you know, a beef shortage is coming. I'll ask you about that. Everyone's freaking out about that. Exactly. So that's not the beef you want anyway. <laughs> so, so what you should do and what I do is, is I've been calling local farmers and um, I found one, I'm gonna to try to find one closer, but I found some, some uh, person in uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch country oh, wow. and, um, and they're gonna sell me half a cow, um, which has been grass fed, grass finished, like the whole thing. You know, and this is the other thing, you know, people don't understand the difference between grass finished and grass fed. So grass fed means you have to feed the cow or whatever, um, you have to feed the, the animal up to a month before it's slaughtered. It's got to eat nothing but grass. And then that month between its slaughter date and then you can feed it whatever you want to fatten it up. That's and most, grass fed? That's grass fed. Wow. And they are doing that. They are, they, and, and, and farmers are filling them with like, uh, I've seen them feed them like sugar, you know, like sort of like Snickers bars and like just whatever they throw at them to fatten them up. So you really need to look for grass finished food. Um, and grass finished means the animal is not eating anything, but what it's supposed to eat. You know, chickens are supposed to eat bugs and earthworms and like all sorts of things like that. Um, a cows are supposed to eat grass. And so if it's completely 100% grass fed and grass finished, then you know you're eating a healthy product. So, so let's take that saturated fat conversation off the table. If you're going and buying you know, stuff from a regular supermarket, 
that is that has been fed corn its whole life, yes, it's a bad food for you. But if you're getting a grass finished animal or a pasture raised chicken, you know, chickens that actually live in pastures, because what happens is, this is another funny one. Um, I'm giving you all my, my food myths today, is that um, what they'll do with, uh, with animal, with chickens, is they'll say they're, pasture, they're pastured. So what, the, what the farmers will do is post a dog right outside of the, the hen house. So once that dog barks at them, those hens aren't going anywhere. So they end up staying inside because the farmer doesn't want to go chase all the chickens back in, into the hen house every day. So, so you really have to be super cautious and super careful about the, pro, the animal proteins that you're going to be eating. Especially now, because we've got so much other stress, people are eating so much, you know, there's so many, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know how this is all going to end up because if you think about it, we're not having a lot of pollution. We're not having, you know, we don't have that to worry about anymore um, for the time being. Um, but, what, but what I'm seeing, especially in Manhattan, is I'm seeing a lot more cars on the road. I mean, when this first hit, there was nothing. Yeah. There was nothing. Now there's traffic a little bit. There's traffic. There's like, you know, people are starting to move around a lot more. Um, so we might not have the benefit of clean air again. Um, for a little while, but um, you know, I went down near the Hudson River yesterday, uh, the other day, whenever it was nice and warm out and sunny, and it was so lovely to just see the river and just no boats going by. It must have been like what it was like when it was first discovered. Well, maybe not with the skyscrapers, but with the trees instead. Um, but uh, so chickens. So that's another thing to think about when you think. But but I really want to encourage people to find local farmers um, and support local people now. Because now more than ever, they don't know what to do with the food. You know, now everything is, you know, they don't have workers to, to, to take, you know, to get it. Wouldn't it be nice to find some local farmer that will pack up a bunch of stuff for you? You take a nice little drive out of the city for an hour or so, get some fresh air, and have them give you, like, fresh vegetables that would otherwise get thrown away. Well, there's quite a few out east, believe it or not. And yeah. Exactly. It's nice for people to get out east. It's nice because these are local farmers to support. We actually, it's funny you said that we took a ride on Sunday. We did the same thing. It was great for my kids just to be like around that farm, just to be around that, you know, just to get out there and get that fresh air. But I am noticing a lot more people on the road. So I think people are anxious. They want to start getting out. Um, I think it's important. Now, what about fish? Because I had this conversation also because people are, re do you know, by the way, that every mini freezer, like pretty much within the radi within the radius of New York, like they're pretty much sold out and on back order. There's no mini freezers. People are buying mini freezers to have a backup to store meat because they're going to run out of meat, beef, and poultry. You know, so it's literally the conversation I've been having nonstop with people. So then I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm sure there's probably healthy fish options also. I'm a big fish eater. I'm more of a pescatarian like diet. Um, you know, I rarely, if I do though, like I'm very specific and selective, I'm happy that you clarify between the difference of grass fed. Cause again, a lot of people that I speak to that are very health conscious are buying grass fed, not where you said. Well, not knowing. <clears throat> I didn't know until today. That's why I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> I know I more people are cooking at home, right? So I wanted to bring it up. And I think with fish, fish is easy. I mean, if it's line caught, wild you know, then, then there, you know, that's the best you can do with fish, right? I mean, that is the best you can do. Yep. I mean, obviously, if you want the lowest mercury fish, you eat the smaller fish. The yep. smaller the fish, the less mercury in it, because the big fish eat the small fish, which have mercury. Yep. So, um, so uh, sardines, for instance, you know, sort of uh, wild trout, you know, things like that. Um, so, so fishermen, and again, going out east and getting, you know, getting the day boats, catch is amazing. I mean, it's what I used to do when I was out there a lot. Um, so, the, so there are really great ways of supporting your local businesses. And by local, I mean the ones within 100, 150 miles from where we are sitting today or where, where whoever is sitting, wherever they might be. I mean, there's, there's, it's just, it's, 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 it's sad what's happening with the food that is unable to be uh, either picked, brought to us, you know, people are afraid to go shopping. Everybody's ordering everything online. Um, so it's kind of um, a little bit uh, 
a little bit sad to me for that. And, and I just want to encourage people that at least in New York, we are coming out of the woods, which is really quite nice. That's not to give you carte blanche to go out and do things, but um, we are coming out of the woods. So I would, uh, you know, things are opening, you know, sort of like you can get MRIs now, you can get, you know, certain uh, testing that you need done. Uh, a lot, two labs uh, are doing uh, antibody testing, uh, which is great. Uh, so, so we're starting to see, see the light as the way that we, we can move forward. And so I don't want people to be in this deficit is what I really worry about is that so many people were here and then they're, well, here, so the, the camera can see it. And then they're going to go right here where the camera can't see it. Uh, so, so that's what I'm really most concerned about. And I really want people to just use this time to look at exactly what you're eating. I mean, because most of us are eating every meal at home now. So really look at what, what you're doing and how you can maybe improve on that. And maybe you improve one meal today. And next week you improve two meals, you know, and then you improve three. And then by the time you're at 21 meals and you're, you've got it, you know, a week, but you know, so it's just to improve a little at a time, you know, get rid of the sugar a little at a time, get rid of the pasta a little at a time. You know, I, I know, I mean, if all of these people are stockpiling every cow we have in the country, then, <laughs> then you might as well serve it with something like with nice vegetables instead of like potatoes and rice and starch and all this other stuff. Now, uh, it's funny, I, I have, before we tie up today, I could talk to you all day long. I mean, so my, I said to my daughter, let's cut back on the pasta because being Greek, they love everything with pasta and it drives me crazy. My husband grew up in a pasta rich household. We all did. So I'm trying to get a little fun. I, I, I bring um, quinoa, uh, you know, in, a lot into the home. Um, my daughter says, I, she goes, I want French fries. And, uh, and I'm like, eh. And she goes, well, what about sweet potato? So is sweet potato a good a substitute for potatoes or potatoes, potato? A potato is a potato, but sweet potato is certainly far better than, um, than, uh, than white potato. For it's sure. we're trying to find good substitutes. Oh, it is. But, you know, but, but since everybody's cooking, let me give you, you know, I, and since I've written, you know, nine cookbooks, um, <laughs> the, the, well, nine books that have, well, one, one cookbook and nine books that, and eight books that have recipes in them. Um, you can make ravioli out of vegetables. Really? With a mandolin. You know what a mandolin is? You know that thing that, okay. Mm -hmm. So you get a mandolin. Um, you can get like things like beets, um, uh, zucchini, those types of things that cut really thin and slice thin nicely. You can use eggplant if you want. I mean, there's zucchini lots of- Zucchini I love to use. Zucchini I love to use a lot. And you can do it really, really thin. And then you make your own cheese filling or meat filling or whatever filling you want. You put it in there. Then you top it off. You put a little butter around the edge and you have ravioli. Wait, which, which one of your books is that recipe in? That one's actually in the Hamptons Diet cookbook. I'm like, I know, I know it. I know, I know it. Yeah, that one's in the cookbook itself. But that's a super, I mean, it might seem labor intensive. What else are you doing? You know, just like it's slicing, it's filling, it's crimping, and it's boiling. And it's, but also the, the movement and doing that is kind of relaxing. The thing that drives me crazy is because, you know, and a lot of parents, I'm like a short order cook in a Greek diner. They're always hungry every time they're looking at me. I got to get creative. But doing stuff like that is kind of cool for them, you know, and especially sometimes your kids like to watch. Your kids might like to stuff. It's like the way we make the cheese pies or the spinach pie that we make, you know. Yes, it's the same thing, only but using healthier. vegetable as the outside. Right. Yeah. There you go. Before we end today, I have an important question because it's a, it's a topic of a conversation I've even had in my household. The whole thing with the antibody test. Do you think it's good? Because a lot of people I know I've been talking to, they've been going and I don't know if they have peace of mind. They just feel like they're doing something proactive by getting the antibody test. Do you agree with them? Like, what's your, what's your feeling? Um, I agree with you. What you just said is that they feel like they're doing something good for themselves. Um, and I think it will give people a false sense of security. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a test that I'm doing in the office that's from Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, you know, it's approved, you know, it's FDA, EUA approved. Okay. Um, and it's an IgM and, and an IgG test. And I think IgM and IgG, IgM and IgG together 
gives you a much better picture of whether you've been exposed, whether you have it now, because so many people have it and don't know it and don't have any symptoms at all. Um, so that test to me is the one that's the most important one. Um, if you want to get an antibody test, great, if that, if that makes you feel better about it, but that doesn't give you carte blanche to then go run outside and go like hug your 95 year old grandmother and, you know, and, and, and not socially distance and have throw big block parties. I mean, it doesn't because we don't even know what the antibodies mean. That's why it was important for me to ask that question because I literally know people that went and got the test and were like, oh, I, I'm, I had it, I'm great, and then had a party. So like, you know, not what people should be rushing and doing. So thank no, you, Doc. No, it's always a pleasure with everything. You know, you, you're an amazing book of knowledge. It's a blessing. Well, I love thank, that you give me the opportunity to share it and I hope people listen and um, I can't wait till our next talk. Me too. I'll see you soon, Doc.